Okay, so uh, hi everyone. This is Lou Martin, and my YouTube channel is called Awakened Spirits Network, and that's my excuse to have wonderful conversations with amazing people like I'm about to enjoy right here and now with Sandy Sieber Quayle. And Sandy and I uh, knew each other back in the day when I was doing classes in Cork at, uh, at Dervish and things like this. And I found her again, and so we've reconnected. And uh, Sandy, would you give us a little introduction of what you're about and why we're gonna have a, a great chat here today? Absolutely. Thank you so much for the lovely introduction, Lou, and for having me on the podcast and everybody uh, everybody uh, who's listening in. Um, thank you very much uh, for your time. And I'm looking forward to, to, to hear what you think about our conversation too. Who, are, who am I? Um, you might already guess that I'm not a native English speaker. I'm from Germany originally, from Eastern Germany, actually. Uh, I was 11 years when the wall came down in uh, 89, so you can make the maths. But what I'm all about is um, hard to say. I'm on a, on a journey of experiencing life to the fullest. That is, that is the guiding factor or the guiding principle of my life, if you will. And back when I was a child, I dreamt of a world full of happy, healthy and wealthy people. And at that time, I was a child, so I was quite healthy, but I wasn't necessarily happy and I wasn't necessarily wealthy either. However, over, over the time, I found my way into the world. I found my way into adventures and also into uh, business management, into making money um, by being a really well-behaved employee um to towards uh my spiritual path finding my way through writing and this is pretty much what we are talking to about about so how we actually connect with ourselves and what we got and how we can use that connection to make ourselves um ready for the world that is externally to or external to us so where essentially we are um, preparing ourselves, our inner strengths, our inner core for everything that we encounter outside of ourselves. And, Beautiful. and this is, this is pretty much, um, what I'm about. There's, there, there are other sides to myself. Um, I, I'm very experienced in insurance, so I'm an insurance professional. That's what I have done for most part of my adult life. Um, 20 plus years, uh, experience there. And um, in my more um, still, how do you call it, uh, money making uh, capacity or where I'm actually uh, working in, in, in or what I'm working on is uh, working with managers to help them achieve effective results without being so stressed all the time. And I do that by, uh, the, by on the job training, um, to help them to reach those effect, uh, those those objectives effectively using the Cuba Pilot strategy, which is pretty much uh, an effective thinking strategy. And Cuba Pilot means uh, know yourself, understand others, build connections, and align decisions. But um, this is this is the other part today. I think we want to focus Lou more on the uh, the inner connection, the spiritual side of how we can prepare ourselves to to actually um make ourselves the best experience or give ourselves the best experience that we can have in this world during yes. our lifetime yes no that's uh that's a feast right there my friend thank you for all of that i i didn't know that you grew up in east germany that is really uh, uh fascinating to find that out because of course that's uh that that gives us a lot to uh you know to to look at in terms of your own challenges and how you've overcome those um, but yeah, the, you and I really connected here because of spirit and our search for uh, uh, living a more authentic and spiritual, uh, spiritually fulfilling and meaningful life and being of service to others, you know, which I definitely see is, is uh, something we deeply have in common. And then we want to talk a little bit about uh, poetry and uh, that writing that you do with your poems. And uh, you were kind enough uh, in the getting everything together here and us getting organized 
to pick out uh, two or three or four poems. Would you like to share some of those with us so we kind of look at look at those uh, those ideas? Oh sure, yeah, I'd love to. Um, poetry is something that uh, I accompanies me since I'm 11 years of age. So I pretty much wrote poetry, even though I didn't like it in school. For some reason, it was my way to communicate, to express what needed to be expressed. And um, to give you a little bit, so I, get, I would like to read like artists of words. Great. I could. Sorry, yeah. Artists of words. I consume words, recycle them, give them sound, cook them up, make tasty dishes, draw short sketches. I breathe words, take their essence, give birth to new constructions with high reaching sentences and intertwining paragraphs on pages full of stories diving into depths of living, sailing through imagined heavens, shiver through the winter, sweating during summer, greeting first buds in spring and waving colored leaves away. Words are a brush of beauty, painting with wisdom straight from the heart. Brilliant, brilliant. Would you send me a copy of that so I can post that on my page at some point? Of course, of course, yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, that was really, really deep and um, and beautifully expressed. See, I mean, I, I, you know, I really feel your passion, you know, to express your what's in your heart. And as you said, you, you ended the, you know, the last line in the poem was about your heart. And when you're saying, uh, oh, I was in East Germany until age eleven. Oh, I started writing poetry at age 11. I'm like, well, okay, that clearly, you know, those two things are obviously deeply connected. Do you have any thoughts about that? Oh, absolutely. Like, um, 89, when the wall came down, was a year that changed. Any Everything changed for me, completely sure. everything. And it was like, like, like a big, big moment in my life. And um, imagine you are in, you know, you are at home. You you know everything. You have your your classmates. You you like I I grew up in a in a small village. So so what do you do? You come home from school and then you just venture out into the woods or fields, whatever. So now the summer of eighty nine, I was just a week away before we went went into the summer holidays. I went on 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 an afternoon cycling trip with um, a first aid group I was involved with. And I fell and injured my knee. And um, and the end of this cycling trip was like a big meal at the nice, um, what is it like, a, like a, a place, a restaurant, probably not a restaurant, but a place where you where you just uh, in the woods where you can eat something and drink something. And the, the place wasn't yet open because it was a Monday. And so we were just uh, sitting on uh, one of those benches, uh, you know, the, the things that you have in woods, like, I don't know, we have that in Germany, but it's like you have, you, ha you have a table, the bench, and then they have a little roof on top. And we were yeah. all sitting on that table and I was busy, busy myself uh, getting a plaster onto my wounded knee. Right. And one of the, 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 the people came and just uh, jumped onto that table and the whole thing collapsed. Mm. And because I was so focused on taking care of myself, I wasn't fast enough to get out underneath that roof. So the roof pretty much collapsed on my back. Mm. And there was a lot of uh, trauma wow. at the time. So I didn't, like, I was super, super lucky because I didn't break anything. And now oh, wow. you, you, could, you could think, like, and I, I think that's a really important because I was looking, how, how's my narrative about it, around this? But uh, I, I came to a conclusion because I was leaning forward, like this tell you in the air in, in the airplane, you know, if you are in front of uh, the airplane on first seat, when you don't have another seat, when you, when, when they crash, please, you, you're meant to just go down. And maybe because I did that, 
I was actually lucky that I didn't break anything. I could have had a lot, could have been a lot worse. Yeah. However, okay. I went into hospital, so I didn't, uh, I didn't finish up school that year with my classmates. And then I went on on a, on a school holiday. No, not school holiday. It was like more um, a holiday camp where you meet other people. And when I came back from that, my mom had moved to a new partner into a new village. So which means by the time the school holidays were over, I started a new in, in a new school. So so I kind of from one day to another, my life completely changed. And here I am in a new school, have to really just dive in into a new life, getting to know everybody, kind of trying to figure out how to navigate uh, living in a new village uh, where I'm the new kid. Um, and then pretty you much two, two months later, so that started in September, October, November. So two months later, pretty much after I started uh, in that new class in a new school, the wall comes, comes down. And all of a sudden, um, the next thing, like even the country I lived in didn't exist anymore. Well, that was right. obviously, it's not a moment, like on the 9th of November in 1989, the wall didn't come, um, come down and everything stopped. But in the, in the, in the, in the next proceeding, whatever, uh, 12 months, it was a huge tr transformation. You have to imagine, sure. so you go to the shops and all the products that you're customized to are not there any longer. They are filled mm -hmm. with all the stuff that you've seen in the TV and on the advertisement because we were mm -hmm. really we were living very close to the West German border, so we did okay. have um, see, we we did secretly watch <laughs> the the Western TV, but uh, yeah. so we knew about advertisement. Uh, but again, it's just like this wow. this this moment where you're where you go in the supermarket and you have to kind of but where is right. Everything. The chocolate that I used to love. Yeah. Whereas, yeah. like, and, and, and this, this, this is now. I was a kid, like I was eleven uh, at the time, nearly twelve. But, but for my parents, that was a big issue. Like for my mother and uh, and and her partner, and for my aunt and uncle and grandparents. And the next thing happens is that they losing their jobs because wow. where they work didn't work. It, 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 everything just changed. Like the, the yeah. whole the whole structure, the whole environment. So that, that was really tough. Um, sure. So 89 is, 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 what, is a pivotal year, I'd say for me, sure. where, where sure. things changed and I needed to learn how to deal with a lot of changes. And maybe that is the reason why I needed, I needed an outlet to understand, yeah. to make sense of, of really what, um, what life is like, sure. you know, how, to, yeah. how, how do I just navigate that? So yeah, um, yeah, writing is no, a great tool for that. Sure, no, that's, that's fantastic. I mean, that's uh, that's a great story. Honestly, I I hope you would write about that deeply at some point. I would love to read a book about a little girl, you know, going through all those changes and finding her her voice through writing and and uh, you know, um, yeah, how that led you to to the life that you have now. You know, living in Ireland uh, all these years later. Um, would you give us another poem? That's that's a brilliant, brilliant opening salvo there. A brilliant beginning of our of our little chat here. It's wonderful. Yeah, I would like, and I just had it there. I would like to read "Universe." That's a poem that it's my first poem that ever got published. Um, my first English poem that ever got published. Uh, I used to write only in German. And I only started uh, writing poetry and fiction in English about two years ago. Right. Like right. Where, where I put a lot of more effort in there. Let's put it this way. And um, sure. I tried, I had a few early tries uh, about 10, 12 years ago, but now I do. I write uh, pretty much only in English. Universe. The early sun lights up the arena of life. Little stars of dust dancing in its beam. A tiny universe where some are extra bright. The world is full of everything. Beings, things, particles, pure consciousness, all floats through time, redefined, yet in endless eternity. 
The sun moves on, the spotlight gun, leaves a memory of its latest show. Are we not just a cluster of tiny little stars, dense energy thought into being by the universe? Beautiful. In darkness lies the truth, haunting buried fears. Nothing matters in its core, coded by boundaries of fine lines. We are not more than the early dust. We are not less than all there is. We are no more, no less. We are, we are because of you. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> Lovely. Very, very nice, very nice. Hun, you have a great gift of um, not only describing, you know, what you're focusing on, but, uh, you know, I really do feel your journey of meaning, you know, and uh, discovery through uh, the narration of, of your poem. And then you do come to, you know, uh, the grace, you know, the magic of, of the ending of it, the, the discovery of having found what you were looking for. It's lovely. It's really lovely. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. So uh, take us anywhere you want to go. Do you want to keep sharing your story of what happened after the wall came down for you and what were the next years like for you? They were quite interesting because obviously there were a lot of changes and I had to adapt uh, to to a different life and my parent, like like my, my mother and his partner and my brother. So we're trying to, to, to kind of navigate what the changes um, and the outside world, and we, we had to build uh, some form of resilience. But one of the, the biggest topics, the first time in my life, we had actually, I had the feeling that my mother was quite afraid. So it was not, she, she's, my mother is a very strong woman and she, she, she put her, like she, she always tried to just make sure everything is all right. But now there, it wasn't like uh, jobs weren't available and um back in the communist country there was enough uh, i'd say enough uh, guidance so everybody had a job whether it was a useful one or not that's not a question and right. i don't want to discuss that but everybody had a job and everybody yeah. was meant to work because everybody worked together on one goal to keep the yeah. country going yeah. and and now this 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 completely changed. Like uh, the generation of my mother didn't have the same um, the same driver as we would have now in in, in today's world, where um, if you don't if you don't take responsibility for yourself, if you don't go to work, and if you don't do things, then probably nothing is going to happen for you. And my mother, fortunately, was different. So she found work again, and she was she was she's more of a of a doer and a pusher to to find herself uh, the next steps. But there was a time um, I remember when I was fourteen, when lots of people in my family had no jobs; they were living off uh, social services, um, and that that put a lot of pressure. So there was a lot of of fear and people were always kind of like looking, oh my goodness, uh, what, what, what are we going to do? And fortunately, um, because my family, uh, they're all quite um, determined to to get the things that they want, they, they, they all found jobs again and it all lifted up a little bit. But when I was 14, there was something else, uh, my, my mother split with uh, her boyfriend or with her partner at the time. So we moved again. And now uh, we moved into a small town or into a town, like in Ireland is probably already clustered as a, as a small city, but uh, well, I don't know. Uh, it was about 60,000 people at the time. So for me, that was big. Uh, I was sure. living in villages that had maybe, I don't know, 2,000, 3,000 people. Um, at Were you time. still in the East or did, did you wind up moving into the West or? No, I stayed pretty much um, until I was 29. I was pretty yeah. much around 20K from where, uh, where, where I grew up, like, uh, or where okay. I was born. So it's just right. in this, this circle. So I stayed very close. Sure. Uh, and um, now I had, again, needed to find new friends and 
go into a new school the school system all changed so i had to make decisions what school do i want to go do i want to go studying uh, which was something that in my in my family nobody did like everybody was working in factories and uh, my father was a truck driver not even then he was a truck a driver like he was a how do you say a crane driver and um but he later became a truck driver but it's, it's all this kind of you know everything was quite working class family so but i didn't my mom always said like if you want to do something different in life i don't want you to work that hard you have to 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 put effort in in your education and she was a very supportive sure. of this cool. so sorry so uh, do you have any sisters sure. or we did you I have, have any brothers I do have a brother who is about three and a half. No, he is three and a half years younger than me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. So he 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 is um he, like that's like it's always hard. Like the three and a half years, it's 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 quite it's quite a gap. Yes. Yeah, uh, and and yeah. because I'm a I'm I'm a girl and he's a boy, so there's yeah. at some point it just gets to a point where yeah there are there there are a bit of divides, but we have a wonderful sure. relationship and we right. always had. Um, but uh, when I was fourteen, like I wasn't really interested in spending much time sure. with my brother at the sure. time, isn't it? But yeah, it was it was uh, tough for a while uh, at, at during that time. And I did okay. decide to go um, to pursue. I don't really know how it's called in, um, in 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 many countries. I know it's in Ireland. It's a leaving cert, so I pursued the leaving cert. And in, uh, in the UK, it would be the A level. In Germany, the Abitur. So, which bring, brings you straight up to a level where you can go to university. Yes. And I struggled. I absolutely struggled because there. In my in my network i was hanging out with people who went to went went to find jobs with 15 and 16 went into apprenticeship everybody had money i didn't and so i started uh early on like with 16 working a lot uh on the side so i went wait uh, waiting i uh, i volunteered in the in the youth club and also made some tips so it's kind of, you know it's just i i need i wanted to live a better life i didn't want sure. to stay in that feeling of there is not enough of yeah. the thing that i like to have in my life and sure. one thing was money so it was really money driven i wanted to have a better life yeah. and and i was really lucky again so there was lots of science in my life uh, um maybe it was because of the writing i don't know but uh i was really lucky uh, when i finally uh, graduated um with 18 uh from from school um, with that leaving zero or A level or however you want to call it, um, I I thought like, oh my goodness, what I'm going to do? Because I didn't like I wanted to study. Of, of like I was interested in work, working with people. That's something that always felt naturally to me. However, there weren't so many opportunities, and and obviously I wanted to make money as well. So I I was really lucky to get uh, an interview in an insurance company. And there were a lot of signs, you know. Uh, I always said I, I want to live up to the age of ninety six. I decided that when I was, I don't know, younger. <laughs> and um, and then uh, my the family name of my mother's mother is Hopfer, so it's okay. like uh, Hopfer is um, the same. How how do you call it? The the, the, the grain that you make beer with. So okay. is it yeah, hop in, in English? Hop. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Hop. So, so, so I had an interview with a with an insurance or with a branch of an insurance company um, on the Hop Mountain, if you will. That was the street okay. name, and uh, and the nice. postcode was uh, ninety nine. What's a ninety nine zero nine six? So, so there was there were there was like oh there are signs I don't know. But anyway, right, I, I landed I landed that job, and uh, that really brought me then into a completely new life again, um, yeah. which was nearly like I was nearly eighteen, uh, nineteen right. at the time, and I stayed in that job for for eleven years, one eleven years, one month, and eleven days. I don't know how this number came about, but right. um, and. That was that, that that was pretty much um, my long the, the company that I stayed longest at. But I stayed okay. at, at it 
during that time in that branch. And I did a lot of different things. So I started with an apprenticeship, becoming an insurance professional. Then I did um, part-time studying to get bachelor level um, of insurance specialist, if you will. Uh, yeah. So like further education in that i became a, a trainer within the uh, within the insurance world and uh worked a lot uh, i can tell you <laughs> and yeah. um but then i changed so i was i was dealing with customers i was uh, doing um insurance advisory i went uh to, I, I trained insurance professionals uh do it in the job and external to the job all supported by the company i like i did everything i just uh, started to be the, the helping out the the the, the manager the manager the branch manager as 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 the organizational assistant if you will and so right. on so i did a lot of stuff um and then i even train like even just became the uh, uh, like a sales manager if you will for pers for personal line insurance Okay. But I felt I felt kind of like ah, oh, that's not that's not enough. This is kind of like ah, oh, there's you know I was still in the same area I was born and 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 I was in this branch and I I, I like there were ten people working there full time and the, the the whole sales force were tight agents. So we're talking about forty around spread out across the area um, from where I'm from. So I felt like quite limited and. You know, I reached the ceiling, and I just needed to 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 get out of it. And right. So, what's the next? Again, what's the next chapter after that? Yeah. So I like I had always the idea of going to Egypt. So when I was a, a child, a very small child, like back in Eastern Germany, and um, if, wow. if if you don't know, in Eastern Germany, we were really confined into or contained into eastern germany so there wasn't sure. like oh book a flight and go to egypt and look at the pyramids no and uh when People i've seen getting it, after climbing the wall sweetheart yeah yeah was, exactly not so friendly yeah exactly so it's like freedom yeah. of travel wasn't there at all no, but there no. i saw the pyramids and i say to my friend this is where i'm gonna go i'm gonna see the pyramids and okay. she was like no you're not because we are not allowed to. And I said, well, I will. Okay. I didn't know. I didn't know what I was saying, but I was determined. I will see the pyramids. Yeah. And in 2005, yeah. I booked myself on a flight, on, on a trip, actually. It was an organized trip, but it was like yeah. an adventure where you go and sleep in the desert and stuff like this. So to wow. Egypt. Yeah. And, and that, that was... Thing. I'd say I was the start of everything uh, going okay. to Egypt. I did yeah. see the pyramids. That's another story, but it's a funny one. Um, but okay. uh, I met a guy who who was traveling in the States. Like he did a high noon um, tour in, in Western, Western America, see. like Western Amer uh, United yeah. States. Yeah. And he was saying, oh, you would love that. It's a hiking tour. It's really great. Just do that. And I thought like, yeah, why actually not? And so I did book like pretty much, I, it's the first time in my life that I booked a holiday um, or a trip just after I came back from a trip for a year later. So it just took, it, it, like I had to wait 11 months until I go there. So in 2006, in September 2006, I I traveled to, to, this, to the United States for the first time flying uh, into San Francisco and when i come out so there were two tours um, that i didn't know at the time that there were parallel tours but i chose there were two tours going going the same route one tour was mm -hmm. for the people who are hardcore they're going and sleeping in tents which was my tour and the other tour was a, a tour where the people sleep in hotels so they were a bit more comfortable but uh the tour guide of the the hotel tour um and and uh, was was a guy I pretty much fell in love um, with um, straight away. I don't know right. straight away, but for some reason I really liked him straight away. And okay. so so because it was a parallel tour, so we started flirting, and and I am I'm an, an a completely different. So I don't really know what happened. So you know, you go to like for me, America was something I've seen in movies. So 
being there in San Francisco already blew my mind. The, sure. Seeing the Golden Gate Bridge with my eyes blew my mind. Sure. So I just, I don't know. And then we went the first night, we went into, into a Chinese restaurant and we get this fortune cookie. And I just opened this fortune cookie and I'm just reading the little line and it pretty much says, don't look at it any further. Your luck sits, it sits already beside your, is already beside your, sits beside you. It was really, really weird. Like it's just there, but, um, and, 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 and it turned out to be true. Yes. See? Good. Yeah. Uh, because, because I started uh, like we, this, this person, Frederick, um, we started flirting and, um, you know, and just, just talking a lot and, and really connecting. And by the time we, we, we ended up in, um, I think it's the second time we ended up in this is the second time, the first time, I don't know. So the, the second time we were in Las Vegas, we did the tour went around like uh, Yosemite going to Las Vegas, um, the, the Grand Canyon. Um, I don't know if the Grand Canyon, I don't know, but it was a monument value, Bri Valley, Bryce Canyon, all those really cool uh, Canyon yeah. lands, all those really cool, uh, wonderful, beautiful uh, destination national parks. Yeah. And so we got, we got, we got, by the time we get, got back to, to Las Vegas, we actually had like, we, we did like a night out. We went out for a nice dinner. We had lovely, uh, lovely romantic uh drink at the palagio watching the uh, the water fountains with the music and stuff and at one point we were standing at and i think it was kenyan lens and or the or the arc arches Na Na national park you know the the, the very big yeah. arch and yes. um i've not been to the new yeah. Yeah, but it's beautiful. And uh, yeah. it was the sunset. And then he was uh, pretty much saying, so, you know, to figure out whether, whether, whether it will work with us, we need to travel for three months. And I'm like, I can't travel for three months. That's not happening. I can't, like, I have a job. I have my life, my family, my friends, my apartment. I didn't own it, but it was mine, my car. You know, it's an old car, but it didn't matter. So it was, I found a lot of reasons why this, this can't work for three months. And he says, so what? Yeah. And I'm like, don't find it. It's like, it's a good argument. Okay. It's a good argument. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't, I like, 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 like all those excuses. You called your bluff, we'd say, yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I didn't yeah. even notice. Like I, for me, it was like valid reasons to not go anywhere. But course, he just asked yeah. me, and I'm like, yeah. "Oh, I had, I, I didn't have anything to say about that." And so I right. decided, in that split second, that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. And yeah. so in in 2007, I left everything behind in Germany. So I resigned from my job. I I, I sold everything that I had um I pretty and much signed out of Germany. <laughs> yes, and, and the two of you fell in love and have been together ever since. Is that the story? Well, not exactly. However, no, okay, I don't want to spoil the fun, but yeah, go on. No, we we uh, he wanted to go to um I think he wanted to go to uh, West Asia, so like to countries like uh, Turkmenistan and uh, Kazakhstan, and I found it really restrictive. It's really hard because you have to be very clear where you want to go. You have to do, get all the visas. That was too overwhelming. Yeah, it's not it a casual place. Yeah, exactly. And I've never yeah. traveled. I never backpacked, so that was something. And he was actually. I I should have told you that he is. Uh, he he's from Switzerland, and he was at the time I met him. He was eight years on the road traveling and working as tour guides in between. That's how he wow. made his money. Okay. So, and the other place that he wanted to go was India. He wanted to go to Ladakh, to the Himalayas. And I was okay with that. I thought like, yeah, yeah, I can do that. So, mm -hmm. so we met, we, we met in India in okay. October, on the 2nd of October, 2007. I, I, I boarded my plane without a return ticket, go flying to Delhi. 
and uh, he arrived pretty much three days later or so. Right. And and we had a good time. Like we went to Ladakh and had oh my goodness, I had wonderful places and like you know I could just talk talk uh, just just for off Ladakh probably probably for an hour. So but let's cut through. Um, I, but but it kind of turned out that we are both very strong willed and we weren't really giving in so we kind of like uh we had our own ideas so yeah. while we are really liked each other and we are still really uh, good friends it didn't really turn out quite the way right. uh, both okay. of us, ho us hope and maybe because we both were stop uh, not stubborn enough to to stick to stick together either i don't know because sometimes okay. when you are in relationships you you know and it gets difficult and we give up then sure. you know sure. maybe 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 good potential has been wasted we don't know um, sure. but but what happened was that um after about three months and traveling or four months traveling where I, we had been three three and a half months in india and then another month in thailand and cambodia um, he had to go back and fire, do some some work as tour guide. So there was some like he didn't have as much savings as I had because I came from a job and I had pretty much gave myself a, a year to prepare and save up. And uh, so he went back working and I went to South America. So I flew pretty much from from India all the way down to um, Buenos Aires. And uh, that, that brought me on a completely new journey. And I met a lot of absolutely amazing people and really helpful. So I, I always felt like I was really protected, if that makes any sense. So well, I've never sure. been been in any, any uh, how do you call it? I've never been in really bad situations. And right. I trusted a lot um, that whatever the next step is, is gonna be all right. So I traveled so all, all I wanna, Sorry, all I want to ask Sandy is, you know, so you were one minute, you're this 11 year old girl in East Germany. The next minute you're in Egypt. The next minute you're at the Golden Gate in San Francisco and Yosemite and, and Grand Canyon and Bellagio. The next minute you're in India. The next minute you're in Buenos <laughs> Aires. So, I mean, that's fine. You know, but can you give us some idea of what your inner journey was like, you know, spiritually in terms of why you were trusting, uh, you know, why you were exploring things so deeply, uh, you know, because it's it's a whole different, you know, life from being uh, working 11 straight years, you know, selling insurance, which to me is not the sexiest subject on the planet to traveling to all the power spots in the world. You know, I, I think we're missing a chapter here about how you shifted from one one way to another. Yeah, thank you very much. Is that fair? That's, sure. Oh, absolutely fair. And I think it's really important that you say that because that's that's what we do a lot of time. We omit, omit what's actually happened within us, and uh, taking taking you maybe in a similar journey, going back before I actually traveled to to Egypt in two thousand five. It was one of my most challenging emotional years because right. sorry but can i just help you a little bit you're doing great and i don't want to put words in your mouth uh you know you're well able to tell your story you're doing a fine job but you know i can't imagine that you go to egypt and it doesn't like rock your world that there's this whole spiritual civilization you know at your feet and what does that do to your inner journey about being you know being yourself and, and pursuing your dreams and, and living a more conscious life clearly you know you made all these quantum leaps one after the other mm. I'd, I'd say uh, when i got to egypt i was more interested in seeing so i didn't didn't actually get that deep just yet okay i i i kind of wanted to see what i've seen in the books back in the days and great and i couldn't where, quite believe where, sorry where where do you make the shift from going like my inner life my writing my love of beauty my love of spirit 
that's preeminent? Where does that really take place in your story? Because you're there. There's no doubt in my mind you're there. You know, yeah. you've had this shift. You've, you've gone from I'm going to focus on security and making money to I'm going to focus on meaning and expressing my heart. Yes. Uh, thank you so much for that, Lou. Because that that well, really I, I, that I helps help. me to to, to 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 make to make that really bring that out to express it right. So so my yes, natural dear. thing is now take 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 my notebook and journal. So now I don't have that, and I want to give you an answer. So what happened was in two thousand and four, I got a book, and this book was don't, don't touch this book. It's a German author. I think I think. I think it's been translated in English, but I don't know. But at the time, no, I don't know for me, title. that that was all new. I was always interested in astrology, in um, anything right. that was a little bit more spiritual. So, okay. and and my grandmother always told me about. She was always, oh yeah, I knew a woman who had the seventh book of Moses. I don't know if you have heard of this, but it's um, it's 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 kind of like uh, it equips people with magical powers, and some okay. people use the good things of it, and some use the bad things of it. So, and I that kept always running through my mind, okay. and and when I got this book, uh, don't touch this book. I just read it with loads of interest, and it showed yeah. it was a lot about um, you know how we are not alone in this world, how there are people who manifest their lives. Yeah. Yeah. and pretty much the secrets and how to to right. make life great so i started writing a list down of what the things that i didn't want and one uh, what are things that i wanted yeah so obviously this list um this list is really hard to write if you are really submerged in the external world sure because all what you want all what you all what i knew at the time and i think it was about 26 27 around um all what i knew at the time was what i didn't want any longer i didn't want to work as hard i didn't want to uh to be in that company anymore i didn't like i was really sure. frustrated uh to say it in a nice word i was really frustrated um yeah i i i felt i felt like as i said before i couldn't do any any of this stuff any longer i was really sure. contained sure. i needed to sure. get out to to, to sure. break free and that was a good exercise. So I put everything down that I didn't want. And then I just looked at, okay, if I didn't want to be there, what is it that I want? But there was yeah. one thing that uh, this guy in that book, that they also said was, don't limit yourself on what you want. Don't write down you want a million dollars. Write down that you want always to have enough money. Yeah. And that's what I did. Yeah. Like I just made a list. I want uh, on that list was I wanted to always to have enough money. I want to speak English fluently. I put down Spanish as well, which really just fell off the bandwagon over over time. Yeah. But um, I wanted to have a partner I can go hiking with because that's lot and who is a real mate. Um, so, so, so these are these are little things. So I don't really know what I I don't remember what I wrote down for job, but uh, I think I just wanted to uh, made a little bit of those things, right? And I wanted to feel fulfilled and and satisfied with yeah. life. Yeah. And that probably was like the nearly like the the the, 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 the initiator, the trigger okay. to actually okay. say, okay, so what do I do with my life? Right. Because I at right. the time I didn't go traveling. I I didn't I didn't I didn't even know because well we did not go on holidays when I was a kid. Sometimes, sure. not all every year, but I had never been in an airplane uh sure. pretty much yeah. until I was twenty two. So it wasn't really something that I was I knew how to do. And yeah. and once I was in, in Egypt, I like I was I was terrified. I was terrified. There were all those, like, there was a group of uh, 10 more people, like, we were 11 people in the group, a very small, small trip. I've never slept in a desert. I never slept actually under, under the stars. I always had a tent. I was sleeping in a tent, but there I'm in a desert, sleeping under the stars. I, I thought, of, I, like, this was fascinating. It just showed me how limited my, 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 my horizon was. 
Okay. There was so much else to explore. And, That's exciting. Yeah. And, and, and now I have seen the pyramids and and uh, I've, I've seen like the, uh, the, the, the Valley of the Kings and in Luxor and I was on that, uh, on, on a boat for a while. It's not like one of those cruise boats. It was more like a small sailing boat that travels on the, on the Nile. And I went uh, snorkeling along a clear, uh, like a reef, a reef in, 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 in the, in the sea, uh, like in the, what is the ocean there called? I don't know, like in, on, on the Red Sea, in the Red Sea. And I went all the way up to Mount Moses to where, where apparently, or like where suggestively, um, he received those 10 commands. And, and there I was, and I felt like, oh my goodness, like the world is my oyster. Like there's so there much go. to explore. It's just, it just opened up like it's nearly like somebody just opens up curtain, curtains and yeah. says like, look, this is your world. Yeah. Yeah, and, well, and you that, you believed it, honey. You you accepted it that this you could do this. You found your power, yes. you know. Absolutely, yeah. And from there, that was what I wanted. I wanted to discover the world. Like I I I wanted to see what else is out there. What, what don't I know? So it just really, it just really, and and the, it it ignited this excitement for experience something new. That I already yeah. knew that I get bored quickly with doing the same old same every day, but now I just like had this wow, the world is such a great place and huge, and there's so much to learn and to explore. And maybe that's what you are asking me. That was what what happened there. So I was now hooked on the idea that there are there is so much to experience, and I wanted to experience that. Whatever right. it you, was, I didn't care about what it was as long as I experienced the world yes. in different ways. Yes, honey, I hear you. And you, bless you, you're my hero. And you opened yourself to trust that you could do that, you know, that the universe would show you and help you to create that. And you've done that. Yes. Well, and that's, that's and, and big, I want you to. That's a big thing, my friend. That's not a small thing in this world. That's huge. Yeah. And and I guess what happened next was that because I opened up and because I was ready to see the signs and the opportunities, I actually noticed them. Like the guy telling me of that other trip that he that he yeah. was so excited about. And I like, yeah. I want that excitement too. I want to experience that. And yeah. that's that's and then the next and 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 sticking around and trusting that this is the right step forward and forward and yeah, forward yeah, that led me yeah. to just following through with it and sure. and and yeah. here i am going to india and somebody says like people there, there were a lot like somebody i was i'm uh, following at the moment I, I don't even know the name i'm sorry um but um she she she's saying it's the people police the people that tell us don't do that because they are afraid for our for, for for what we do because they couldn't do it themselves they are they're right. not so much afraid for ourselves but they are afraid for themselves or maybe a little sure. bit for ourselves and when my mom was quite trusting uh people that i work with they told me things like don't do this you're just you're just like going traveling giving everything up you are you are mm -hmm. nearly 30 you will never get a job when you come back you are in you're in the age where you get kids you know, you can't give up now. Um, or, wow. or that's other pretty disappointing. Yeah, yeah, pretty but, fearful. But, yeah. but other people saying things like, oh, India, you know, that is completely <laughs> different of what you know. That will be right. like a culture shock. Right. And all right, these right. things. But all what I felt when I actually just stepped in that airplane and gave my mom the phone that I pretty much lived with 24 seven, like my first mobile phone, more or less. Well, at that time, it wasn't the first one. But um, yeah. I felt as free as I haven't right. for a right. very, very long time. So sure. the freedom. So, so, so it, it didn't matter. It didn't matter what, what happened. I had enough funds in my account. Like it was at the time, it was about 12,000 euro. So I had enough funds uh, in my perception to, to say, well, I see that true. It's going to be all right. I'm going to travel until I run out of money. 
Yeah, and 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 I just trusted that everything yeah, will be yeah. all right. Yes. And everything was. And it was. Bless you. Thank you. All right, we got there. Can you give us a thank you? That was brilliant, honey. I'm so happy to know all this about you. Sandy, would you give us one or two more poems as we come down the home stretch here? Okay, absolutely, absolutely. Um, thank you. That was fascinating. Thank you. Seriously, a delight. Wonderful. You know, I'm going I mean, to read. Really, sorry, yes. let me just say real, real briefly. For people, um, you know, we all get so involved in our own in our own story, and it seems so normal to us because we've made our peace with it. But from the outside, you know, you started as one kind of a person in one kind of a world, and you went through these changes that are very private and personal and, and often unconscious. You know, but you you're living a completely different life in a completely different world by the end of it. And you know, for me, it's like uh, it's just like listening to the poetry. You know, I'm following the thread, going, okay, you know, how does all this fit together? So you've you've made me very happy to that you're sharing all of this with with me and all of us. Thank you. Thank you. That was really, really, really uh, powerful for me as well because I realized how how resourceful I am. And sometimes when you are in in moments where things are actually looking maybe not as, play, as 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 wonderful like the storm yesterday it's really hard to see the end of it when you're in the midst sure. of it so and that's sure. really important sometimes if you have somebody to just nearly like pull it out of you thank you so much <laughs> yes dear yes well and thank you honey and the other thing is uh you know it's learning to pay attention to the the clues and the whispers and the synchronicities and you know, I'd love to hear more about your grandmother. That 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 seems like another whole thing. But yeah, just a a, a novel of uh, or a, you know autobiography, what have you, a memoir of of you on your own journey. You know, going from one world to a completely different world, and not letting anyone or anything stop you. You know, that's that's what makes the hero's journey. Is we keep being true to ourselves despite the the losses and the challenges. And we keep listening and trusting our inner guidance, and it it leads us to what is bigger than we'd imagine possible. Absolutely, you know, yes. That, that oh, we, wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So yes, a, a poem or two as we as we come down the home stretch, if you would. Yeah. So I'm just I'm just trying to figure out which one is probably the better one um, to well, read. Read them both. No, don't don't worry about it. Read them both. How about that? Yeah, let's see if we have enough time. Um, oh, we do. Okay. We do. We have yeah. Finding, finding flow. I'm on a river flowing downstream, but I want to go up onto higher ground, growing like a tree, into a mountain, being on the top for everyone else to see, to notice me. It is my river that is frozen, so I can keep hiking up to follow my dreams. I'm freezing, the ice has taken my fire, dying embers in tough competitions. When I stop, I'm dying of emptiness. The sun comes out, ice flows, break. A raft floats towards me, SOS. I hang on, floating down, away from all dreams glory. My heart warms, lush forests, blossoming of life. My body heals. The mountain top sweet icing cuts sharply into the blue sky before I lose sight forever. In front, my life is emerging, the riverbank ever changing. Some moments are rushed, others are slow and calm. My heart is crackling with joy, like a full blown campfire. I've never felt as warm climbing or as safe being up high. It is my river that is flowing, so I can keep living my full potential. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you. And yeah, yeah. Go on. Give us. Can you give us one more? And the and the other one one is uh, similar um, as the core message. I might I might think of silent meaning. The chapters of my thought, the chapter of my thoughts 
pushing, pulling, pressing, squeezing, seeding, soothing, finding, filling, falling out of me, following the pen onto the page, the line, the next one, all over again. Never a hero, yet full of monsters. Never a fool, yet full of ideas. Never a beggar, yet full of needs. Never a queen, yet full of reigns. Never a man, yet full of strengths. Never a woman, yet full of care. Never a boss, yet full of control. Never a slave, yet full of service. Never a child, yet full of play. Never a sage, yet full of wisdom. Never a teacher, yet full of content. Never a student, yet full of curiosity. Never a poet, yet full of lyrics. Never a singer, yet full of songs. Never a player, yet full of zest. Never a doctor, yet full of healing. Never a designer, yet full of creation. Never a writer, yet full of words. Landing on each page in quick succession, climbing up the tallest hills until the climax releases, eases, appeases, a silent meaning, mind from the mind, by minding, finding, filling, falling out of me. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful, honey. Those are, those are wonderful poems. The last two were both gorgeous, and I love the other two as well. That's that's a feast. That's 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 a joy to hear all that. Let me ask you. Um, thank you again for for sharing your your story and your and your art with us here. Your your beautiful writing. Do you ever read? Uh, have you read any of the uh, some of the German writers that I've read, like Hermann Hesse or Günther Grass? Well, I don't like, like um, right. What do you mean? Like uh, Hermann Hess, I did, I did, yeah. yeah. Um, Gunter Cross, I tried, but I didn't get okay. into it. So it's, okay. it's, it's, you know, the, like my my favorite, um, like he was more a Czech, um, was Kafka. So I really love Kafka. So Kafka okay. is one of the writers I I adore. I, I like okay. because he writes in riddles, and I love the riddles. <laughs> so. Yeah. It, he he he's a fantastic writer and he just keeps you he keeps you engaged and he, he he does that what what i find what people can do with you like if you're in a relationship and you get challenged and you keep on working on it through that challenge rather than walking away and i think sure. um, kafka is one of those people he 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 kind of gives you this challenge and you can work through it without having the other person that that has their own challenges so sure. which is fantastic so i like he, he's one of those uh, writers i really adore wow. um yeah i have to say they're like i i really i really didn't like literature in school so uh, okay. we, in germany we we did a lot of analysis analysis everything was about wow. how to analyze it in a way oh, that Everybody, like, like the, the, the curriculum uh, yeah. really expected us to. So I just yes. like, I, I read the, everything outside of school. Um, sure. Yeah. I made sure that there, yeah, but I didn't read so many of the, yeah. the classics they, in German. They take the joy out of all of that, you know, that's, it's, it, yeah, that's, that's a shame. But uh, I, Kafka is an amazing writer, uh, absolutely. And uh, yeah, for me, Hess was, was definitely, one of the bright lights of my uh, of my adult adolescence, and uh, I started with Damien and went, to, you know, uh, Steppenwolf and uh, Siddhartha and um, uh, Narcissus and Goldman and the Glass Bead Game, uh, Magister Ludi, you know, same same book. It, just a, a feast of wisdom and um, and depth and poetry. You know, a lot of a lot of uh, beauty and, and majesty and magic in in uh, in Hesse's stuff. So. You know that's that's great. I mean, Kafka is, you know, uh, very timely to our world right now with all the authoritarianism and and uh, bureaucracy and and uh, the totalitarian uh, energies that we're confronting right now. So he's a great name to bring to mind as well. I I got to uh, go to Prague and uh, there was a museum there for Kafka, which I got to see, which was which was lovely. I don't know if you've ever 
had that pleasure. I have That's a great place. Yeah. yeah. No, I haven't yeah. been in the museum. I've been to Prague, but I haven't been to to, to the museum. But I really like like his work, and um, yeah. yeah, I I do read a lot of classics at the moment, actually. Uh, okay. So at the moment, I'm working through like I'm reading War and Peace from Tolstoy, which wow. oh my goodness, <laughs> it's 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 yes. But you know what? I wouldn't have been able to read that when I was young. Um, yeah. Now I can see all those oh my goodness he was he was he was such a great observant oh my goodness the way he describes yeah tolstoy is a genius there's no no doubt about it nobody yes, wrote fiction tolstoy. you know did you do you ever see there the bbc did a great series on war and peace like eight or nine episodes that's worth seeing if you haven't yeah no i just want to read it first okay <laughs> so sure. i yeah no the, the book is always better than yeah. any any film brilliant brilliant yeah well um and so where can people find you and what you want to share your you have a book in german that you want yes. people to know about as well yes exactly so, so so first of all like i i write um on substack um which is surprising offspring.substack.com um for my poetry or for small tiny flash fiction pieces uh usually um i am on instagram at sandy sieber uh, you can find me on facebook um under sandy sieber Quail. you can find me on linkedin so but i also have uh an, an a medium account so you can also find me on medium uh, with sandy sieber Quail. um where I do write as well. So there, there yeah. are loads of places where you can find me. If you Google yeah. Sandy Sieber Quail, you usually should find uh, find sure. me. Sure. I read your piece and, about uh, the New York uh, writing contest and uh, political satire. That was very good. I just read that. Yeah, no. Well, well, I, I was meant to write, uh, like I did, I did this NYC Midnight Challenge for a short story, and uh, I throw to write a political satire with the subject of toxicity. And there was a pet sitter as a character that I had to draft in. But I, I, I just I just can't write. Like I'm not I'm not a sat satirist yeah. or a satirist. Yeah. I'm just not so it took me a while to actually just 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 um accept the fact that yeah. I have to let that yeah. go. Uh, yeah. which is not that easy, right? I so, hear you. I hear for you for trying, but it's a very niche thing. I mean, uh, Hunter S. Thompson and, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the writers uh, in America, I grew up reading uh, political satire. There aren't a lot of them, and it's a real uh, acquired skill. So good for you for trying, and it was a great piece that you shared about all that. So thank you for that. Yeah, thank you very much. Well, sure, the... the I, I'd like to, I'd like before yeah. we go. This is this this is the book I I wrote. Um, pretty much I started while I was traveling and finished it off. Then when I already was in Ireland, so that's that's in German. Uh, it's 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 a tiny novel. Uh, it's called okay. Aus der Sicht der Dinge, which uh, means um, the perspective of things or from the view of things. And okay. uh, it, it's 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 a story for kids and uh, adults. And uh, right. it's pretty much about uh, a seven-year-old uh, girl called Lisa, who um, who befriends a teddy bear, and this teddy bear uh, called Osito was traveling with um, her uncle Frederick, Freddy, uh, around the world, and he brings a lot of stories that uh, the teddy bear has experienced with things like the camera, the hiking boots, the backpack. And sunglasses, and uh, so so it's a journey really uh, into into the world, uh, to India, New Zealand, uh, Machu Picchu. So there, it's it's yeah, it's it's kind of like the book that came out of my travels, if you will. But at the same time, a little Lisa is also needing to 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 deal with the separation of her parents and the the whole friendship with that teddy bear helps her to deal with that. So that's that's the book, and I got wonderful reviews. Uh, it's been published like ten years ago, and it was absolutely Great. wonderful. And yeah, uh, maybe maybe uh, there will be an English copy at some point. Uh, who knows? 
depends on how many people want to read uh, the one in German, but um, there is always room for, for opportunities and sometimes it's enough to put them out there into well, the universe. Yes, my friend, you've put it out there one more time and all I know is the more I put it out, the more it comes back and you've done a smashing job today uh, sharing your life and your story with me and uh, and I'm very grateful to you for your time. So thank you. Thank you so much for having me, Lou. That was such a wonderful conversation and I learned something. I learned something uh, about telling my story. It's not about what I've done, but who I was at the time and what really happened within. And that's really important. And sure. it's easy to forget that. Thank you so much. Sure. A pleasure, a pleasure. I'm saying again, I would love to read the book that really goes in from uh, you know, the journey from uh, being in East Germany at 11 to uh, living in Dublin, Ireland at your, at your current uh, station in life and, and how you got there. Uh, it's an incredible story and you're an amazing person that you've done all that. And I really appreciate you sharing that so beautifully with, with me and with all of us. So thank you again, Sandy. Thank you so much. Thank you so you're much. You're welcome. Thank you. Wonderful. Have a great, you're welcome. Have a great day. We'll talk again soon, I hope. Okay. Yes, we will. All thank right. You. Peace and blessings.